the Con Norfolk Conservation Commission, uh, it's October 14th, 2020. In accordance with the governor's order suspending provisions of the open meeting law uh, relating to the 2020 novel uh, coronavirus, this is meeting is done on Zoom. Uh, relating to the 2020 novel uh, coronavirus. This is okay, is David, this, David, this uh, is where I need to pause for a minute, novel, please. Uh, coronavirus. Okay, David, this. David, this is where I need to pause for a minute, please. Okay. David, this is where I need to pause for a minute, please. Sorry about that. And the aliens have got us. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Type into Amy right now. I don't know. If she. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you have any? Uh, yeah. Are you trusty on both? Oh, you're trusty on this. Any ideas? I hear it three or four times. It sounds like it might have opened it in a few tabs. I don't know do, where all that audio is coming from. Oh my God. Dave. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too. That it's. Dave. Yes. Dave. Yes. Amy. <laughs> Sorry. Amy, are you talking to David Turry? She's not getting right here, Andrew. What's that? She's not getting the feed. I'm not sure. I don't hear the echo anymore, but we don't, it's because we don't hear Amy, so I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy? She's not getting the feed. Can you hear me? I'm not sure. I don't hear the yeah. echo anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, so I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy? She's not getting the feed. Can you hear me? All right, I just muted everybody. Now, people, unmute yourselves, David Turry. Um, I cannot find. I just can't find where that's Unmute open on yourself. my computer. Uh, Rich, can uh, you hear me? I cannot find. Yes. I cannot find where the TV is open on my computer anywhere. That's Unmute open on my computer. Uh, Rich, can you hear me? I cannot find. It's on a delay and a repeat. I cannot find where I the TV is open on my computer anywhere. That's open on my computer. Um, can yeah. you close down your internet browser completely right now and like restart it? On a delay and a repeat. 
because Zoom should stay open, that everything should be fine. Yeah. I'm going to text, I'm going to text Amy. Just to... Dave? Yes. Oh, no. Sorry, I meant my Dave. <laughs> Sounds like it's okay, right? No, I just shut everything down. Um, so Amy can shut down and rejoin. Well, it's not feeding back now and the, the stream and everything is still going. So I, okay. I don't know, it, it, it's, it could be okay. Can you hear us now? It's Andrew? still going for you? Yeah, it's fine. Andrew? Yeah, no, I, I mean, think, Andrew? Yeah, the stream's still going. So if it's not feeding back. I... <laughs> if I can get back into it now, which. We do see you and hear you. Okay. Yeah, you don't, if it's still running, uh, you don't technically need to be there. I control that now, so I, you might be all set. It's not feeding back. No. Yep. Yay. Sorry <laughs> about that, everyone. I say go for it. Okay. We're we begin. It's the Norfolk Conservation Commission agenda. And because of the coronavirus, we're physically closed uh, the town hall to the public. And so we're on Zoom tonight. Uh, everything is being video and audio recorded. And thank you for coming. Okay, first we'll get uh, Sam Evans on the forest. How'd you do, Sam? Uh, I think I did pretty well. Uh, I just saw myself. Uh, is it okay if I share my screen to uh, share yeah. the pictures? Yeah. yeah okay. So, um, this is the entrance, as you can see now, uh, a lot clearer than it was before. I added these, there were some uh, things outside the road that I kind of just made as uh, marking the entrance. And uh, so first thing here is I put a sign, uh, just made out of untreated wood, so it doesn't really have any impact. And I just nailed it to a tree, and uh, there's a little cardinal on top, and those I have... <laughs> I got like eight, eight or so of them. I kind of spread them across the trail for the uh, for the kids to find on their walk down there. And uh, I put bird box as well. So, you know, there's one. I painted everything red, you know, a cardinal theme, keep them with the color. Uh, and there's like another little cardinal down there, if you can see my mouse. Uh, continuing down the trail, that's uh, this, like the main part, you know, very clear. I think I did a pretty good, I think we did a pretty good job on it. Uh, there's another <laughs> cardinal up close. Uh, awkwardly nailed to a tree. Um, and we also put bat boxes as well. So you now from the same brand as the uh, bird boxes, so pretty much the same thing. Um, and then this is uh, kind of the first open area where you know, we clear everything out. And behind that tree, there is a, a little hidden bird, bird box we put for the kids to try and find. And uh, this is the main area. You now we have Bird box, we have a little bird, we have a bat box in the top right, and uh, of course there are the painted benches. It's that, and these are the painted benches we painted. Uh, they're nice and bright, red, you know? And, uh, oh, I thought I'd put a picture of the before and after, but uh, it was just all covered, so it's all done now. And uh, I think it went pretty well. Oh, it looks nice. Yeah. Janet, did you go out there? Not since it was completed, no. Okay. I was I wasn't sure with school open if that was appropriate. Yeah. Okay. It looks good. I think we'll um I'll accept a vote to uh accept the project from Sam Evans and the Kunde Forest. If somebody would so move. So moved, Al Finney. Second. Second. Any discussion? Anybody in the audience? 
Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes. Sam, we've accepted your project. If you, we have to sign off paperwork, uh, why don't um, uh, probably work with Jim Wilson? Yeah, um, yeah, he sent my original paper, so uh, I'll I'll send will. I'll send I'll send Mr. Wilson an email. Okay. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Sam. Great work. Thank you. Okay. I like that. We'll do uh, for Coesit Avenue, 24063. Uh, we'll reopen the um, hearing. Has everything been done to our satisfaction, Janet? Yeah, I went out there last Thursday and uh, Amy was there. Um, and we walked, we walked out back, what she had done, you know, asked her to extend the erosion control a little bit. Um, and then they sent, they were nice enough to send photos of where they did more work and extended the erosion control. So I think they've um, covered their bases from what we were asking them to do. You know, they, they put down, and I think she said she got the seed from Vermont, it's slope stabilization seed. Um, and how that's coming up along that down slope down to the erosion controls up from the wetland area. So it's just going to take a little time for that stuff to, to thicken up there. Okay. Uh, any questions from the commission? Comments? Anybody in the audience? Okay, you have a uh, prepare the order of conditions for this property. So uh, first I'll take a motion to close the hearing. Ali Ferrer, I move to close the hearing for number 240-0631 for F. Is there a second? I'll second Fred LaBerge. Okay, we'll do a jury aye. Ali Ferrer, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Al Finney, aye. Okay. Uh, there's no opposed. Everybody. Are, oh, Val, I'm sorry. Val here? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think we said it at the same time. Uh, Val Stone, aye. Okay. All right. Uh, so the uh, hearing is closed. So I'll accept a motion to uh, provide the order of conditions for uh, 240631. Ali Ferrer, I move to provide the order of conditions for 240-0631 for Clarissa Dav. Fred LaBerge, I'll second. Any further discussion? Anything, body from the audience? Okay, uh, roll call. Dave Turi, aye. Ali Ferrer, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Dalston, aye. Al Finney, aye. Opposed? No, everybody, there's everybody. Okay, it passes. Um, so please sign the signature page and get it to Amy uh, at the town hall. And then um, the property owners can pick that up when, Janet? That would be Amy, depending when the form comes back yeah. with the signatures. Yeah. Um, I'll, I can stay in touch. Who's on? Tara? Paul, uh, Paul's on. Paul, Paul Camendo. Paul. How are um, you? I can give you a call and update you as to what I've, um, when I get the signatures. And is the form online or we have the form already or? Janet's done the form. I just need to get original signatures from each of the members. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep, and thank you. Once they sign it, then I'll be able to send it. I out. thought it was something we signed, but that's fine. Oh yeah. No, no. All right. Great. Numbers. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. You okay. Too. 11 uh, Pennacook Street. I'll open the hearing for NOI 240-0633. Uh, Janet? Good evening. Uh, revised plans? We got a revised plan last Thursday afternoon from John Glossa. Um, Beta had a few items that they still wanted to show up or to be tweaked on the plan. 
which John Glossa did adjust. And then late this summer today, that plan did go over to uh, uh, Julia, over hopefully over at Beta, for them to look at. And I'm not sure. Yep, and she's here tonight too. I see her name. Um, Janet, do you want me to show that on the screen? Sure, that would be nice. Thank you. Uh, Julia, yes. your comments? So John did apply the contours as were you, uh, mm -hmm. we request, requested. So those are showing up appropriately. Uh, we me mentioned um, putting a note on the plan about dewatering. And I don't see that, but that could also be something that you add to the order of conditions. I think it's on there. Julia, I don't, I don't want to be argumentative, but look where it says Montauk Ave and just to the right of that. Yep, right below where you had your cursor. Sorry, I was just going to. Oh, okay. So right, yeah, here? right there, yep. Oh, okay. Yes, I was. I read the notes to the right side. Yeah, I know. I know Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought it would be in there also, but for some reason it ended up right in the middle okay. of the well, I appreciate that. Thank and it's you. And it's a standard note that we use that, you know, if the contractor encounters groundwater that he, you know, has to stop and immediately Perfect. notify Janet and myself to come up with a plan to uh, uh, handle the deep watering. Perfect. Very good. So you're satisfied? I'm satisfied. I have no other comments. Yes. John, you're satisfied? Yeah. The, so the other thing is just FYI, on the left side of the lot to the left of the driveway, Janet had asked us to extend the erosion control all the way down to Pentecook Street and, and connect it to the uh, erosion control that's uh, along Pentecook Street. And we did that. And then on our detail on our silt barrier. Um, we had the filter mitt, which is uh, what the commission likes to see. And then we just added the word orange on the silt fence. So you're gonna have the filter mitt and then an orange silt fence. Um, we think that's important also because the, uh, it gives the uh, contractor, the uh, operators of the machine a pretty good uh, visual of you know where the limit of work is. Okay. Any comments from the uh, commission? Any commissioners? Anybody in the audience have any comments regarding 11 Pentecook Street? I think Tim Martin has his hand up. I can't see that. Uh, it went away. Tim? I'm here, Amy, yeah. You have a question? I do, uh, thank you. Just an administrative matter on the um, Proposed order of conditions. I think it under paragraph four, um, it says property owner. I just want to make a correction there. And I can, the, the, there are two parcels involved here, two assessors parcels, and they're held in uh, separate nominee trusts. So what I could do is I could email to Amy and Janet the appropriate trust names, if you'd like, and have that changed. I think that would be better for the registry of deeds and anybody doing research on this property down the road. I'm sorry, could you start again? What are you talking about? Thank you. <clears throat> so Janet, I'm just, just a clerical uh, administrative change. Under, under the proposed orders of conditions, uh, line number four, it says property owner, Miriam Hurley. Now, right, that, that's what came in on the notice of intent application. Yeah, I, I noticed the, uh, which is, which is accurate, right? But I noticed now the uh, there were two parcels involved, and today the, the 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 titles to those parcels are in different nominee trusts. So I I figured we I can email to you and to Amy the name of those trusts, so that when this gets recorded at the registry, it'll be aligned. Is this something new? That got changed. You can just add it under organization. Yeah, there's a line there for organization. And I just think for clarification, it's best to have that on there. 
Oh, okay. Just to add it under the org the line C for organization. Sure, I, I, what I can do, since there's two parcels and two trusts, I could email to you and Amy the names of the trust. And if you could add, add, add that on there, that'd be wonderful. And that ties in with the deeds? Correct. Okay. If you say so, boss. No, it's correct. That's correct, uh, Jim. Okay, so you we're the... uh, agreed on that. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Did we receive the final invoice from Beta? We received one invoice from Beta. Um, I don't know. I, I emailed Marta to see if there was more coming, but I haven't heard back. And since Julia's here tonight, there might be at least one more meeting added. I don't know. Yeah. So you, you know? I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Marta figures that one out. If I might, Dave, David, it's just so Mr. Martin knows that we're not sure because you originally forwarded money to cover the consultant. We're not sure where that final bill will be. So we're not sure if additional funds will be needed or if you'll get the refund of what's left over. Can we close it out? There's a balance of $350 right there now, and I'll just wait and see if there's another bill forthcoming. And then I can either return money to Tim or request more money to cover the bill. Yeah, you, you, can, you can vote them, and if you vote them uh, approval, you can sign them and then just hold on to them until, until any uh, invoices uh, are finally uh, paid. Reconcile. Okay. All right, I'll take a motion. Is there any other comments from the commissioners or the audience? Okay, I will uh, entertain a motion to uh, close the hearing on uh, 240 11 Pentecook Street. Holly Fair, I move to close the hearing for 240 11 Pentecook Street. Is there a second? I'll stone second. Is there any discussion from the commissioners? Any further discussion from the audience? Okay, all in favor, we'll do a roll call. Dave Turry, aye. Allie Frayer, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Aye. Val Stone, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Al Finney, aye. Okay, it's unanimous, it passes. Um, um, just a point of order. Yes. Um, Al actually did not attend the meeting on August 12th. So I won't count his vote. I'll count the other four. Oh, okay. Okay. So that now we'll uh, co co as well. obtain a motion to uh, put, uh, yeah, uh, sign the OOC uh, for the, this property. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion. Jim Wilson, I make a motion to, to accept the orders and condition for 240-0633-11 Pentecost Street. Second. Fred LeBurr, second. Is there any further discussion? Anything, body from the audience? Okay, roll call. Dave Turry, aye. Kelly Frere, aye. Fred LeBurr, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Valstone, aye. Okay, it passes uh, unanimously. Um, so we can, um, yeah, sign the papers and then uh, Amy, you hold on to everything until uh, we get the final invoice from Beta. Amy? Yep, okay. Okay. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we'll go to uh, 180 Union Street. Uh, do we have the DEP number on that? Uh, yes. Oh, I yeah, 635. Okay. Um, we'll open up that hearing for 240 635. What other equipment? Uh, information or is DEP looking for Janet? 
um, the form isn't completely filled out. They don't have the information for what um, the impacts are, like uh, riverfront, how much riverfront's on the property, how much, you know, are they impacting that the whole idea is what are the impacts to resource areas? So that information is not on the form. Um, that's going to be provided to conservation up to DEP. If they go way over numbers or whatever, then you can't allow it. So they need to give that information so the public can, the hearing can go on. We're kind of at a standstill right now. We know what they want to do, but we need to know what the impacts are to the different resource areas. Who's representing uh, the 180 Union Street tonight? Well, that would be me. I'm the homeowner, yep. Mark. Um, I had a guy that was helping me, Charlie. He told me everything was all set. Um, and then my wife said that there was some stuff missing today, and I, I had no idea. Um, he said it was all set. He talked to them. And I don't know. That's what I was told. So I'm kind of in the loss here at, that there was stuff missing. Janet, do you have the form that has the missing information? That's the um, notice of intent that they submitted to us and sent up to DEP. And um, Mark, just so you know, I had emailed, is Charlie, is that his name? And I never got email with what was missing. I never heard back from him. And according to DEP's emails, I do believe they tried to um, get in touch with him and haven't heard back from him. So DEP did give a number, but they do have the note on that, that file number sheet about how information is missing and they need that information. Okay, I, I mean, I'll have to get that from, I'll have to get I that situated. In the state of Massachusetts, they make sure that everything's okay first. And if we uh, get you that information, we can uh, complete it in uh, November and uh, provide the orders and conditions. So um, I'll take a motion to continue 180 Union Street. Allie Ferrer, I move to continue 180 Union Street to, what is our next meeting? November, November 4th. To November 4th. And what time do you want to put it on, Amy? Uh, 7 o'clock. <laughs> 7 to 7 o'clock. Thank you. If I may, David, we already have something set up for 7 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Who's that? 7 o'clock is the MBTA. Oh, okay. Um, request, and then 7 05 is 108 Rockwood Road for expanding his driveway. Oh, okay. How about uh, 7 uh, 15? It's fine with me. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? It's Fred, I'll second. Okay. Uh, roll call, Dave Turi, aye. Ellie Frere, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Al Stone, aye. Al Finney, aye. Okay, it passes. Um, so 715 on the 4th, Mark. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. 120-128 uh, Seekonk Street. Uh, installation of a chain leak fence. Uh, where does that stand, Janet? Did you go out there? Yeah. Yes, I did, sir. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, got a little wet. Um, did you bring and, any ticks home? I'm sorry? Did you bring any ticks home? I always have ticks, David. <laughs> I have a collection going. Um, just for <coughs> members, though, because I was not aware that I think the zoning board, um, when the when the 144 Seekonk Street went through zoning board, that zoning board had it where um, the owner of 144 Seekonk, Mr. O'Hart, would put up a fence um, between the back part of his property and two um, abutting properties. So this came in as a request for determination. It was a little um, uncanny because I didn't kind of have a heads up, but we used some of the plans that we had in the 144 Seacom. This was originally in the 144. 
but it showed the area that we're talking about. So this is one property, 120 Seekonk Street. And then Amy, if you scroll to that next page, well, also too, right up above this, it's not marked in red, is the 128 Seekonk Street. Oh, you can't see me pointing. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Um, if we see that other sheet, it'll go along, it'll straddle the property line between 144 and these two properties, 128 Seekonk and 120 Seekonk. And I believe, Mr. O, I, we haven't, I haven't really gotten anything official about this, but it sounds like Mr. O'Hart will be installing and paying for this fence. Um, and when I was out there, and I think I sent, forgive me, um, Dr. Carpenter, I do believe I sent you an email asking you about the, um, those no trespassing signs, are those on the back of your property? Is he there? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, yep. thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, that in my screen, the lower right hand corner, there is a marker. And we did put uh, no trespassing signs up uh, last, well, winter, or actually uh, probably the spring, because we had hunters shooting back there. Uh, and uh, so we put them up for those two. Two properties, and actually the third one above that also. Okay, I just, it was just also a reference to um, make sure I was in the right spot. So when I saw those signs, um, I figured I was pretty good. So um, have you been back there to see where it's marked for the fence to go in? Um, yes, the, I was back there, I think it was Monday. Uh, and there are uh, they're, they're just just uh, flags, uh, markers, ribbon markers along that from that uh, corner, lower right hand corner there, uh, and and up, you know, that straight line up up across there. That's right. There are yeah. there are flags in there or have marked. I don't know how. I, I assume they're fairly accurate. I've not had it done in, I had it done 23 years ago, <laughs> but uh, uh, Mr. O'Hart evidently had, had it done. And I, I went back there with, uh, with uh, uh, my GPS and, and my slowly losing memory <laughs> with age. Uh, and, and they looked to be pretty accurate. Okay, super. Okay. And that's, um, it's the idea because this resource um, was on the plan for 144. That's something that was accepted with that hand red that came through. So that the red polka dots down there, that's the, that's the wetland area, is the 50 foot buffer. So where this um, fencing is going is not within that 50 foot buffer and then it's buffering in the 50 to 100. So, um, Hopefully, it's not going to be that much disturbance with people going in and digging holes and putting up the fence. So. No, this is all pretty clear. Uh, <clears throat> back to my property here, it does get a little uh, woodsy in the back of this property, but uh, it, it's all actually this this corner up here kind of sits on a precipice, and that's all really quite clear. There are a few trees, but that's all. There isn't a lot of brush. There is more brush as you get down down into this area. And, and that would be beyond that anyway, beyond this bubble uh, that was within that uh, 50 to 100 uh, range. Okay. Okay. There should be no affecting of wildlife um, in it at all. As a matter of fact, I have been in contact with the, with, with the head of Fish and Wildlife in, in Massachusetts, uh, who assures me that that should be, be no problem. And how high is the fence? Uh, five feet. Okay. Chain okay. link, be a chain link fence. Mm -hmm. um, this wasn't a hearing, was it, Amy? No, it was kind of a mix up thing. I, I asked for it back I don't know, several, several months ago, yeah. several months ago. And, uh, 
I understood from the chairman of the ZBA that it should go through um, the ZBA. And so I <coughs> did my thing and then was told very unceremoniously that uh, it didn't go through the ZBA, that it had to be direct. And uh, so I, uh, I got in touch with uh, Janet and, and started, started that process of okay. what, what it needed to be done. Okay. So I'll accept a motion. Is there any other comments from anybody regarding that? Oh, yeah, paper towel. Okay, then I will <laughs> accept a motion to uh, approve an RFD for 120-128 Seekonk Street uh, with uh, negative number three. So, excuse me, David, it is a hearing that we need to close. It is an advertised hearing. It is an advertised hearing, okay. <laughs> Then I'll accept a motion to uh, close the hearing on 120, 128. It was dirty. <laughs> Pat LeBron, so, so moved. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Fred, okay. you take it. You take it, Fred. Alan beat me to a second. Okay. Any further comments? Then uh, we'll take a roll call on closing the hearing on. Uh, RFD for 120-128 Seekonk Street. Fred? Uh, aye. Alan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Val? Aye. Alex? Aye. Allie? Allie? Aye. <laughs> Alex, Allie. Dave Turry, aye. Uh, so the hearing is closed. So now I'll accept a motion to uh, sign off on the RFD 120 128 Seekonk Street. The negative three, did you say? The negative three. Fred LeBurr is so moved. Al Finney seconded. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Alexi? Alexa? Allie Fair, aye. <laughs> Jim Wilson, aye. Hey, Alan. Al Finney, aye. aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dale? Val Stone, aye. Dave Turi, aye. Uh, so that passes, and we will. Um, Dr. Carpenter, uh, be in contact to Amy. Be in contact with Amy, and when you can pick that paper up, I will. Good to go, and good luck with that whole project. I thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, uh, let's go to um, action items and orders of extension. Uh, Eleven Old Cart Path. They requested a COC. Um, and so we need to extend that. Correct? Janet? I'm sorry, what? Old car path, we need to vote to extend the order of conditions. No, they want their final paperwork. They're all done. They want their air A plus. So um, two things. They need a certificate of compliance for the notice of intent, the order conditions that they had for doing the house, septic, driveway, et cetera. But then they fall under an old expired order conditions for when the original roadway cul-de-sac stop river road, I think in my notes had come through. So um, that still will be tied up in their um, deed information because it was originally the big parcel yes. that got chopped into different lots. So it'll be a certificate um, of compliance for, I can't find my notes, um, for the 217, that was the year it was issued, dash 311 Oak Car Path, and then a certificate of release from the older one for the subdivision, the 212 03. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to. Um, Issue the CFCOC for B201703 
uh, regarding 11 old car tab. Alex Barr, I move to issue the COC for B2017-311 old car path. 17-03, yep, okay. Uh, is there a second? I'll second, Jim Wilson. Okay, discussion? Is the property owner here? Anybody representing this? Okay, uh, we'll take a vote. Uh, Alan? Aye. <laughs> Fred? Aye. Alex? Aye. Jim? Aye. Val? Aye. Dave Turi? Aye. So it passes. Then I'll entertain a motion for uh, a COR for B2012-03. The issuance of. Al Finney, so moved. Second. Allie for a second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all in favor of, uh, now take a roll call to issue a certificate of release for B2012-03. Alan? Aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Allie Frere, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Kyle Stone, aye. Dave Turi, aye. It passes, so that is issued also. All right. Uh, 75 Cleveland Street. And what do we need to do on this one, Janet? Um. They, they have it coming in because we originally issued an order of conditions last September. Um, yes. Okay. That has not been recorded yet. Um, but when it had come in, there was that existing house that I love down on. It's still there. Um, down by the road, they had the cesspool and our order of conditions was for getting rid of the cesspool and changing it over to septic. Now they have a revised plan for... It's knocking down the house. Um, it's going to be a four bedroom house instead of three. So it's a bigger septic system. It's, and remember DEP before with one of the others that we had that if there's an increase in impacts to buffer or resource areas, you know, that they are required to refile. Um, and I think when you add in everything that's changed on this, that lot that we, I, I was in touch with assessors this afternoon because that lot now, well, when we issued that order, it was for the whole big, I think it's 13 acres or something. It was for that whole big parcel with the map lot lot that has since been split. So now this that we have is 75 Cleveland is now 77 Cleveland because the back part is a new estate lot. They're going to knock down the house, put up a new house, put up a driveway, put up a road to the next thing. There's a bigger step. So the whole thing's changed. That original order never got recorded. So that's not on their deed. Um, and that lot that we did the paperwork for doesn't exist right now because it's the lot's been changed. It's a new lot. So I personally, you know, just getting back to basic with what we what we were saying for buffer for with that original septic system now is a bigger septic system. So I don't think we should be changing that order of conditions for them. If, if they need to go forward, in, in theory, they should be doing a whole new notice of intent. Um, that lot won't even have a new map lot lot number <coughs> until January 1st. So um, that's just my, you know, we got the plan in for that the change in the septic. They're showing the other things being outside of resource areas, but those resources were never confirmed with conservation. When we did the septic, there might have been 10 flags that we accepted, the ones that were close to the septic, that they wanted to propose septic just so they could go forward with that work. Um, right. So, you know, there's, oh, thank you. There's other resources on that lot. They don't show up on this plan, how close people are to them or whatever. You know, these, those flags, I'm pointing, I'm sorry. 
the flags that you're seeing on that plan now are, are probably the ones that were accepted for that original septic system. And this plan that you're seeing is what they're proposing to do. Amy, do you have the older plan on there? Yes, give me just a minute to grab it. Yeah, okay. Is there somebody representing the property? Yes, there okay. is. Uh, my oh. name's Frank Gallagher. Okay. Uh, I'm Gallagher Engineering in Foxborough. Okay. And um, I've done the uh, new design plan and I've been working on this property uh, for the last several months. Um, and I could give you a little bit of, I, I think the, the, your person who just spoke was pretty accurate in, in their um, description of the recent history. Um, but what, what's happened is that um, the property is 18 and a half acres and um, a new, uh, some new owners have come in. It's um, the owners are actually two different individuals, although they're related. Um, the Nolans, um, John and Nancy, um, have bought that along with uh, their daughter and their son-in-law, who's uh, Jeff and Liz Dennehy. Uh, it, 18 and a half acres. And what they did was they used the um, estate lot section of the uh, zoning bylaws to get a special permit to divide the property into just two lots. So the lot that we have in front of you is now a five acre lot. Um, and uh, it's actually, as, as she said, been reassigned to be number 77 Cleveland, although it does pretty well contain the existing house that's 75 Cleveland. Um, but uh, the new owners who are Liz and Jeff Dennehy uh, plan to um, take down the existing house and build new. Um, now, the work that's involved that's within the 100 foot buffer zone is really just the septic system, the house, the driveway, all of that. And the other utility connections are all outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, it, it's correct that the existing house was a three bedroom house and the proposed house is a four bedroom. Um, but also the existing three bedroom plan that was approved by the commission calls for a waiver to place the leaching field closer to the groundwater table than what Title V calls for on new construction. With the new design that we have, um, we do keep that four foot separation to groundwater that's required. So we're better environmentally in that respect. We're also better in that our work within the buffer zone is less than what was previously approved by the committee. Uh, so, and if you see, if you look at the plan that we submitted, I've kept the existing limit of work that was approved as part of that septic system repair for 75 Cleveland. Um, but if you look at our grading for the new leaching area, we could actually reduce that limit of work. I kept it where it was approved, really just for simplicity's sake. Um, but if you do look at our, our grading lines, our proposed grading lines, we are doing less work within that 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the approved plan for the three bedroom repair showed grading line extending right to that limit of work. We, we don't have that. So, um, so based on all of that um, and the fact that we're outside of the 100 foot buffers, even if you just take those 10 or 12 flags that were approved with the existing order of conditions, 
the house, the driveway, everything else is outside of the buffer zone. So based on the fact that we're really doing less work than what was previously approved, I thought that it would be best for the new applicant to request that we do this work under the existing order of conditions. Um, and I don't see any reason why we can't, given the fact that we're well within the approved limit of work. And in fact, if the commission would like, we could even reduce that and we could bring the erosion control further away from the edge of the wetland. If you want to establish a new limit of work, we'd be happy to do that. What would you like to see, Janet, differently than what we've already issued? Um, we'll see here when we do the order of conditions. You know, we did a book and page number. Um, you know, we're referencing a map block lot. That, that order of conditions was not recorded. So that doesn't, you know, they, they've changed the lot. It, it's like everything is different. Also, I'm, I can't, I don't have my uh, Oliver open, but um, because, and I'm not throwing stones. I understand about people buying things and developing. I have no, well, I have a little problem with that. But um, when this came through, originally it was gonna just be that house, get rid of the septic, which was next to the, you know, the little cesspool area, and then put up this septic you know, in the, um, I think it's the 50 to 100 foot. So it allowed that house that's been vacant to have somebody go in and have their new Title V, which is required. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think, I think this area down here is in the natural heritage area. Um, and I don't know if they filed, there's inland restricted weapons on this lot. There's a lot of resources and here they're putting in this driveway they're demolishing this house putting in the new house there's more stuff happening on the lot, <clears throat> but we're just focusing on those original flags that were accepted um and even the rest the whole lot was flagged i checked with russ waldron today and i have it scribbled somewhere but i think it was back in 2014 I can't, I can't even find my notes right now. I'm sorry, I moved too many papers, but I found them. Yay, May, um, yeah, May in 2014 is when he originally did the delineation on this lot. And everybody's been using that line. And all he did was, and that's what he said, yep, BPW only. Um, and that's what everybody's been looking at for this whole project, which, you know, if somebody, hire someone, they say, we want you to go out and delineate the, the bordering vegetated wetland, and that's what they do. That doesn't mean there's not other resources on this lot. Say there's a perennial stream back there, and there's a 200-foot riverfront area. So, um, you know, our original, yeah, you can go ahead and do the septic in the buffer, but now it's, it's become something more because this plan is including these other projects and we don't know if those fall under resource areas or not. So we need to have on. another notice yeah, of intent? Referenced everything too, no longer exists at this point. Right. So we need a new notice of intent? I would prefer that, yes. Okay. And I don't, you know, and I don't, that's something for them to work out if they're going to do that, because when I check with assessors, I think, because I said, please hurry up and give me, you know, the size of the lots and the map block lot for the split. And they had the back for the, the back is 75. Um, and that's keeping that original map block lot that they have, but they won't have, she was saying they won't have information for this new front lot until January 1st. Um, 2021. Who's so, that? That was uh, Chris in the Sessor's department. Oh, okay. Yeah, something they just got their paperwork Monday on this back from the Registry of Deeds. Um, but then that new stuff supposedly doesn't, I don't know how their stuff works, but that's not going to be available until January 1st for that front lot. So, um, 
it's nothing against them building. I just think we need to go through it properly, that's all. Okay. Mr. Gallagher? Yes. Your feedback, comments to what you well, just said? I, just with regard to the natural heritage, um, she's correct, there is, that area is within a um, protected habitat area for box turtles. Okay. And um, so we, we did actually file uh, with MISA and um, we just recently did that. Uh, and that was not even initiated by a filing of a wetland filing or anything else. Some, they, um, Natural Heritage contacted the new owners on this property and said, hey, you know, you need to file with us. So we did do that and we do have their approval. Um, and if you go out there, you'll see that uh, they asked us to place a, um, or they asked the owners to place um, a fence that essentially is there to um, keep out the box turtles, which is, I guess, the protected species out there. Eastern uh, yeah. So we have just, just for information and, uh, you know, the commission is, of course, I'm not telling you which way to go on your decision, but at least as far as natural heritage, we have um, gone through that. We've dealt with them and we've gotten their approval to do the work that's, um, that's anticipated there. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any questions, comments? Uh, just as a point, David, um, even recently we've, we've required applicants to um, reapply with the map changes, which they thought were minor, and we've had them redo their OOC. So I think to be consistent across the board that we've required other applicants to do the same thing that we have to, when there's a change like this, that I feel that we should be consistent. Agree. Anybody else? I, I, I just like to ask being familiar with this area, the new septic system there, Leachfield is proposed. Where is that in relationship to, I believe there was a, what they called a fire pond or a man-made pond there to the right of the existing building. Where is that, that one that's there in relation to that? Um, well, if uh, the pond you're referring to, I'm not aware of, but if it's within the BVW um, and it doesn't show on my plan, so it's not been, it's not been flagged out in any of the information that I've gotten that's, you know, that's preceded the plan I did. So I'm going to, it's got to be more than a hundred feet away from from the proposed leaching area because we're almost a hundred feet away from the BVW and that pond must be located inside of the BVW. You, you're right on that. It is because that, oh, it was just gorgeous bullfrogs out there croaking when I went out there. But that's within that BVW, um, those little zigzag flags that you see in the bill point, upper right-hand area. Um, but that's one of my points is that's another that's showing you an example of resource areas are out there. So it, again, it's just, where is it? Would that be impacted with any proposed work? That's, it's not to stop anybody, but just, you know, try to get everything done properly. But I know that little pond that you're talking about, it's kind of close to the road and everything, but it's right within the, uh, that wetland area there. Yes, but it's yeah. not showing. Okay then, so uh, if we requ require another uh, order of conditions, um, this isn't a hearing, correct? Correct. Not a hearing. Um, so uh, how do we proceed on this, Janet? Um. Should they refile? Yeah, we're going with the thought that they can't go forward with this change um, under the order of conditions that they have. But, you know, if they want to go ahead with this project, um, 
the idea of refiling, um, but but showing all the resources that are on this lot, um, mm -hmm. just so just so everything gets taken care of. Okay. I have yeah. just one question, if I yeah. could. Um, so the wetlands that are shown on this plan, I guess, are an accepted line by the commission, or at least up to some certain point. Am I right? Yeah, right in the order of conditions, we stated which flags were you specified. Okay, you specified which flags were accepted. Yeah. So then, should we? go beyond that with with more of a delineation or are we okay with the line that we have here? Right here, special conditions. Only delineation accepted during the public hearings is bordering vegetated wetland flags AES 17 through AES 26, which okay. are roughly the ones that you're seeing there. Okay. Yep, 17 through 26. So then do we need to do more than that, I guess, is my question. Well, it'd be, where is that pond? You know, same thing, natural heritage. I mean, if you could send along the stuff from natural heritage, were they, were they just focusing or dealing with that back lot or, or were, they, hmm. were they looking at the entire lot? Because this that, you're, that we're seeing now has to do with the front, the new front yeah. lot. So- yeah. They, um, they looked at the entire lot. Um, but did they know with, that this was being proposed? So that's the kind of stuff we need to, to work out. Okay. All right. So what am, paperwork has to take place? Another notice of intent? Mm -hmm. Right. If this is going to be the actual, everything that they want to do on this lot, you know, the driveway, the new house, demolish and everything, same thing normally would be in that erosion control all the way outside okay. the 100 foot buffer. But, um, you know, where's the resources? And there's also inland restricted wetland on this lot. So um, those things need to show up. And a lot of that information is on all, of, well, that's not on all of it, but that's on the town site. We have the maps for the inland restricted wetlands in the office. Um, so you're welcome to come in, talk, hash things out, whatever, you know, to get this moving along. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll have Mr. Gallagher get a hold of and coordinate with Janet to uh, go over all the uh, issues and then uh, file a new notice of intent. Okay. Okay. And we don't need a vote on that, correct? That's correct. Okay. So that it's clear, you know, that they can't go forward with this, with the order of conditions that we, that were previously issued. Yeah, yeah, Janet or David, maybe, should we take a vote and? Um... Do we cancel the original order of conditions? Janet? You know, well, we actually have lawyers on conservation, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, where we issued this for a whole big lot that's now being chopped up, and it hasn't been recorded, so I'm not sure legality is stuff. Um, I think perhaps, uh, just uh, my opinion is, until such time as a new order would be issued for, for the different work that's being proposed, you might want to leave that, you know, the order in okay. place. All right, then I'll accept a motion for a notice of intent, a, a new requirement of a notice of intent for 7577 Cleveland Street. Or should we just say it's 77 Cleveland? Because we're only talking about this first lot, correct? Correct. So I'll entertain a motion for that, for 77 Cleveland Street. Uh, requirement for a notice of intent. I make a motion for the requirement for 77 Cleveland Street to provide a notice of intent. Really for a second. Is there any further discussion? 
from the commissioners, from the audience. We'll take a roll call. Jim? Aye. Callie Fair, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Sal Stone, aye. Al Finney, aye. Dave Turi, aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Hey, thank you. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> okay. Um, one hundred and four, Cleveland. And fifteen fruit and seventeen fruit. John, uh, what yep, are we? That's, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Go, John. Okay, so John Glosser, Glosser Engineering, 46 E Street in East Walpole. And um, the commissioners may remember that orders of conditions were issued for four lots that essentially are on the corner of Fruit Street and Cleveland Street. So one lot, 102 Cleveland Street is under construction. And um, um, so the owner, and he's still the owner, um, Dominic Rossi um, has a purchase and sales agreement with, and I think you may be familiar with this person. I've never met him, but I've talked to him on the phone and emailed Fisher Hashem. Yes. And so um, I explained to Fisher that um, the orders of conditions were, you know, specific and the, everything had been laid out, you know, where, as far as the septics and the water services and things like that. And that the, you know, houses essentially had been approved and the driveway locations, et cetera, approved by the Conservation Commission. But Fisher has his own architect who drew up uh, house plans for the three lots. And the, um, you know, architect obviously was familiar with the plans that were approved and the architect drew plans that are very similar to the plans that were approved, but they're not 100% the same. So um, Fisher asked me, you know, are the plans now approved? So we put the architect's plans on uh, houses onto our plans. And I said, well, Fisher, they're really not because I don't get to make that determination. The only people who get to make that determination, whether this is approved or not, um, is the Norfolk Conservation Commission. I said, you know, in the end, with what you're building and because it's so similar, I would not have a problem saying that the um, construction is in substantial compliance. I said, but if we're gonna get, you know, if we're gonna have a, 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 or not have a meeting of the minds with the Conservation Commission, let's have it now. Let's not do it at the end and, and find out that, you know, when you need to sell these houses that, you know, there's potentially a problem. And so I met with Janet and went over the plans with what the changes were and Janet's suggestion was to, you know, simply take it in front of the board um, for your opinion. So I wrote a cover letter basically saying what I just told you or just said to you. And then I wrote um, for each of the lots um, what the changes are. Um, if you want to cut to the chase, so on all of the lots, the limit of work the erosion control line has not changed. It's the same. And on all of the lots, the grading shown on the plans that you approved and shown on these plans has not changed. In other words, the elevations of the buildings, the elevations around the buildings, the elevations over the septic system, the elevations of the driveways, those are all the same. Um, basically what's changed is some of the buildings are actually a little smaller. Um, some of the buildings are a little larger in the sense that they might be wider rather than not as wide as the, the buildings that were approved. Um, and um, so 
and and you know some of the buildings might have bump outs where there weren't bump outs on the other ones. So I tried to be as specific as I could um, and go through each one of these um, and, and just uh, um, outline for the commission um, what the changes were. If you want me to do it one at a time, I can, if that's what um, you would like me to do um, or you know, kind of leave it at that and I can answer questions, whatever you'd like to, me to do, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, and so these, uh, Janet, you said that there's really no increase of impacts to the resource areas. So we just reconfirmed these order of conditions with the yeah. revised plans. Yeah. Um, John did well with you know, listing each one separately and, and any variations he listed on that sheet. Basically, yeah, we what, that we, what we originally set up for, here's erosion controls, here's what you're doing. There's in the same space. It's sort of like, just think of squeezing the house or pulling the house, that part got changed, but there's no increase in impacts to the buffer or the resource areas, which is our concern. Okay. Um, we didn't, the commissioners didn't get that letter, I don't believe. Um, so, Mr. Chairman, I, if you can, if Amy can put the plans up, um, I can read you, read to you the changes on okay. each one. Amy? Maybe that would give you a, a little level of, of comfort. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's Cleveland Street. So that's 104 Cleveland Street. This house is very similar to the house that was approved. So let me just go through the letter. Um, number one, I said the limit of work has not changed. And number two, I said the grading within the work area has not changed or any changes are with inches of the approved plan. So not even feet, they're, they're within inches. The septic field is smaller and slightly farther away from the wetland than the approved plan. The septic tank has been moved slightly and is about eight feet farther away from the nearest wetland flag. The driveway is in the same location as the approved plan and it is at the same elevation and grades. The house is about 104 square feet larger than the approved plan. So it's not very much larger. The house is two feet closer to the wet, nearest wetland flag. The garage is 48 square feet smaller than the approved plan. The garage is one foot farther away from the nearest wetland flag. And the water service is shown in the same location as the approved plan. So again, I would have no problem at the end of the process you know, writing the letter that says if this house gets built versus the one that was shown on the approved plan, that the site is in substantial compliance because the um, changes are so small and ha absolutely have no impact on the wetlands at all. So that was number 104. Um, okay, let's people. take them individually. I can answer uh, any questions, sure. Yep. Is there any questions from the commissioners? Or anything you want to add, Janet? No. One, th one other thing I want to point out that I didn't write in the letter. All of the houses are at the same orientation as the approved plans. Nothing's been okay. twisted or turned or anything like that. They're all at the exact same orientation. Okay. Well, if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion to... Uh, Confirm the OOC issued for 104 Cleveland Street uh, that the revised with the revised plans is acceptable to the commission. I move to accept the OOC for 104 Cleveland Street with the plans as just described. Is there a second? Well, so. Vail. Okay, Vail. No. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, any other comments or co questions? Then we'll take a vote on uh, 240 605 104 Cleveland Street 
that the original order of conditions be revised with the revised plans as submitted uh, with no changes. Uh, roll call, Alan? Aye. Allie Frere, aye. Fred LaBerge, aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Kyle Stone, aye. Dave Turi, aye. Okay. Uh, 15 Fruit Street. Do you have that one, uh, Amy? Yep. Okay, so just for reference, 15 Fruit Street, as you're heading up from Cleveland Street, it's the second lot. So it's the one that's near the existing or nearer to the existing house um, that I believe is, well, it must be either 13 or 11 Fruit Street. Um, so again, the limit of work has not changed. The grading within the, within the work area has not changed or any changes are within inches of the approved plan. The septic field is smaller and slightly farther away from the wetland than the approved plan. The septic tank has been moved to the front of the house. So on the approved plan, we actually, because we were kind of squeezed for space, we stuck the septic tank in the back and had the pipe running around from the back of the house to the front. Now we're able to move the septic tank to the front of the house. So the septic tank is slightly farther from the wetland than the approved plan. The driveway is in the same location and at the same elevations and grades as the approved plan. The house is slightly smaller than the approved plan. The house is seven feet closer to the nearest wetland flag as the house is slightly wider than the approved plan. So when I say smaller, I mean by square feet, it's smaller but it's a little bit wider than the plan that was approved. And it moved it seven feet closer to the nearest wetland flag. The garage is slightly smaller than the approved plan and the water service has been moved to the north side of the driveway. Um, but it's, I believe it's right along the edge of the driveway. So it's, it's, um, it's you know, still obviously within the work area. What's um, the distance to the wetlands from the house? Um, can you give me one second? And the house to the nearest wetland flag. Is 67 feet. So that's from the right rear corner of the house to wetland flag 39. Okay. Any uh, comments, questions, Janet? Um, no, we're good. Uh, commissioners? Seeing none, then we'll accept a motion that the uh, 240-606 uh, for 15 Fruit Street, the order of conditions issued on uh, 6 12 19 uh, be modified in, to include the revised plans with no changes to the OOC. Fred LeBur is so moved. Al Finney seconded. Okay, we'll take a vote. Alan? Aye. Allie Fair, aye. Fred LeBur is aye. Jim Wilson, aye. Josh Wilson, aye. Dave Turi, aye. Okay. And 17 Fruit Street. I don't know. They've got the screen. So, okay. So, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, so this is the lot that essentially is on the corner of Cleveland and Fruit Street. So, again, the limit of work has not changed. The grading within the work area has not changed or any changes are within inches of the approved plan. The septic field is smaller and slightly farther away from the wetland than the approved plan. The septic tank is in the same location as the approved plan. One question you might have is why are the septic systems smaller? And it's because the Board of Health um, eliminated the requirement to design for garbage disposal. So it allowed us to make some of these septic systems smaller and move them farther away from the wetlands. 
the driveway is slightly wider near the house um, to accommodate a two car garage. So the approved plan had a one car garage. This has a two car garage. The driveway is four feet closer to the wetland than the approved plan. But this occurs just for a very short length of driveway um, near the house. Um, the house is about 200 square feet larger than the approved plan. The house is three feet closer to the nearest wetland flag. The garage is 168 square feet larger than the approved plan. The garage is four feet closer to the nearest wetland flag. And the water service is in the same location. And so what is the uh, distance to the wetland? So from the garage to the nearest wetland flag is 61 feet. And from the house to the nearest wetland flag is 54 feet. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions, comments? Okay, then we'll uh, entertain a motion for 240-0607, 17 Fruit Street, that the original order of conditions issued on 612-19 uh, be modified to include the revised plans with no changes to the OOC. Jim? Hi. <laughs> no, you want me to make a motion? Yeah. I make a motion that we accept the small changes as noted for 240 607 17 Fruit Street. Is there a second? Really fair second. Any other comments, questions? I have a question. Yes, Jim. Um, just as a point, we probably should have on record, we're approving these OOCs with minor changes. Yes. There are OOCs that were issued on 6 12 19, 2019. Is today the new date for the order of condition? Or does the order of condition still start on the night on 2019, but with these changes? No, the original order of condition date stays. This is just um, they're making slight changes to the plan, checking with conservation if it's, if it's okay and allowable under the order of conditions that was issued. That's okay, all. so so he has, John has two years to complete these structures or he right. has to file for an extension. Right. Okay. Good question. Okay, all in favor? of the motion to accept the OOC with the revised plans. Say, we'll take a roll call. Uh, Alexandra. Aye. Jim Wilson. Aye, aye again. Aye. <laughs> Al Finney, aye. Al Stone, aye. Fred, you were an aye? Yes, I was. Okay, Dave Turing, aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank, thank you, John. Glad thank you, members of the commission. And thanks a lot, Janet, for helping You're me with welcome. this. You're welcome. Sir. Okay. Um, we want a certificate of release for the uh, 8201203, Janet. Janet. Now, give me a hint where, where we're at. Stop River Road? No, we already did that. The, okay. The, yeah. Okay. That was part of that 11 old cart path with the house yep. and then the cul de sac. Yep. Okay. Um, I think okay. The, and if um, Rich hasn't fallen asleep yet, maybe he wants to do his presentation. Yep. Now it's Rich's turn. Good evening. This is uh, Richard McCarthy, Norfolk Town Planner. I'm here to uh, 
Rich, do you want a screen share? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, the first item is the uh, conservation restriction for the enclave. I'm going to uh, just pull up the presentation. There you have it. The packet, but uh, bear with me as I log in. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Uh, hold on. Right, should see it now, right? Yep. Okay. And I think uh, I think I did see Tom DePlacido on on the uh, Zoom call as well. Oh wait, wrong one. Sorry. Let's see, where's my, here we go. Sorry, there we go. All right. So uh, just for background, uh, if you remember from last November, you could see the letter the commission did vote to uh, move forward with the conservation restriction for the enclave, which was the, uh, the 40B development off of Village Green. If you can see within that circle, it shows the, uh, the lotting configuration for the enclave. And then the, um, this area here where my moving my cursor is the uh, area of the conservation restriction. I've been working with um, Mr. DePlacido's environmental consultant, Janet, town council and uh, executive office of environmental affairs on the language for the conservation restriction. It's going back between all the parties mentioned. The language is, um, the final language for the conservation restriction is up with the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. For final review, the, um, the next step would be to return it back to the town for a uh, vote for approval from the Conservation Commission and the uh, select board. Um, I think uh, I'm gonna scroll to this, just gives you an idea of the kind of an aerial perspective with the wetland. I think for the most part, let me see one more. I think this plans, let's see. I'm gonna jump, sorry. I don't know if you can see that that well. Let me zoom in a little more. And I'm going to pull up a little bit here. So, so essentially on the screen are the, uh, the, re the reasoning for the conservation restriction that are incorporated to the conservation restriction, which is the, uh, the habitat area, um, preservation nearby natural areas, scenic natural uh, landscape preservation. And you can read through each one of those items. If you recall, there is a, um, there is a walking path that goes from the new uh, roadway, which is um, Avery Way, Avery Circle? It's Avery. I don't know if it's Way or Circle, I don't recall, but I know it's Avery. Um, there'll be a pathway through the development, through the the woodlands over to Juniper Lane, which then, as you know, does connect over to Boardman Street and to the elementary school. And that, that pathway will be available and open to the residents within the development and the Norfolk Town residents as well. So um, those are the components of it um, on that side of it. So um, tonight, what I wanted to do is just bring it before the commission give you uh, just a refresher memory on it. I don't know, um, probably, uh, let's see. So I think you have a few newer members since November, if I recall. Yeah. 
Um, so that this might not be as familiar to them. Um, but what I want to do is just, I can pause here if there's any questions and then we can go. Through. The pathway includes a bridge, doesn't it? It does. Over the wetland area? Yeah, there are, there is. There's a little footbridge. And if you remember, they went back and forth with uh, revising the size of it to minimize the, the uh, impacts. So yeah. if, uh, if you wanted to, we could pull up the plans that were approved by the commission and there's a, a, a sketch in or a photographic image of what the bridge will look like if, but it is a, it's pretty typical what you you know, you see the low impact footbridges where they're wooden and they span the, the resource area. But that's, okay. that's what's proposed as part of it. So we're uh, waiting for the, uh, for the yeah, information so to come back? Yeah, we're waiting from Executive Office Environmental Affairs um, to give us back the final language. Um, so hopefully we get that in, for the November Conservation Commission meeting. So that way you can, you know, vote to sign it and then come in and sign it. Because there's a little bit of pressure on Mr. DePlacido to try to get this conservation restriction on record. Mm -hmm. um, as part of the of the permitting process with the state, um, but at least so far, I would say that I know things appear to be fine on his end of it. I think we're fine on the town side of things, and as I mentioned, Executive Office of Environmental Affairs is fine. I was hoping to get it for uh, for tonight's meeting, but the person who does the coordination of the state is on vacation until yesterday, mm -hmm. so I don't have it back. Otherwise, I would have included that and perhaps tried to see if the commission was comfortable enough to try to approve it tonight. But I'm open to any okay. questions. Mr. Placido, do you have any comments? That's your school. Yes, um, I, I don't. I think. Uh, the town planner, Rich, Rich uh, has done a very good job presenting this. And uh, uh, I am into some time frames to uh, have this um, signed and completed, um, basically from the, uh, the state. And uh, right now, just waiting for their final blessing on the language, um, which is pretty typical for what they, uh, they have. There was just a couple of tweaks that the town of North Fork wanted. And um, we're just waiting for approval on that. And, and once we have that, um, would hope we could uh, get it signed and get it recorded so the land is uh, protected in perpetuity. Okay. Yeah, we hope to uh, be able to do that in November then. Uh, is the commissioners, uh, commissioners have any questions or comments? Okay. So uh, we'll put it on the agenda for uh, next month at uh, 720. Okay, uh, Amy? Yep. And uh, yeah, we should have the paperwork and we can uh, vote on it and uh, let you get going. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, Rich? So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll go to the next one and follow the order on the agenda. So let's see. That's Myrtle Street? Yeah, so this is... Uh, so for the people who've been in town for a while, this is Mrs. Cleary's property um, on Myrtle Street. If you look uh, my cursor here, you can see this, these two piece, these two lots here, along with 65 Myrtle Street was her entire property. Um, there was an estate, uh, a state lot plan filed with the, the planning board as well as these two street lots for approval. These two lots have been developed and the homes are, I think they're, they're occupied now, or at least they're for sale. I can't, I'm pretty sure they're occupied. Um, so the last lot by Pelcon development to be developed is 65 Myrtle Street. Now this particular project, 65 
Myrtle Street and even the house lots, there was no conservation commission jurisdiction under the local bylaw or the Wetlands Protection Act. So you know, there's probably not necessarily as much familiarity, but when it went through the planning board permitting process, one of the conditions of the permit was that a conservation restriction was to be placed on this estate, the rear portion of the estate lot. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna scroll down so we can just look at it a little bit closer. So I can give you, uh, and I'll jump back to the, uh, you know, some of the conservation values. But so what I did is I put this red dash line in here to approximate the area. So this rear portion of the land was to be uh, placed under a conservation restriction, uh, similar to uh, the enclave. We went back and forth with uh, the applicant, town council, Jan and myself, executive office, environmental affairs. That's awaiting their uh, final review. But I wanted to bring it to the board, the commission's attention tonight, because like I said to you earlier, it's something that um, you know, really essentially, it's probably brand new to everybody, unless you really follow along. What I wanna zoom in on this particular plan, just to show you, uh, so this is, so this was the actual plan that was approved by the planning board. And if you can see here, it was, it's labeled natural heritage, so there is, habitat to the rear portion, or actually habitat over this entire lot. It did go through the um, state process for habitat evaluation. The, uh, it was approved by them um, based on this development proposal here. One of the things that was included with the planning board approval, and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so we can take a look, at least I can't see it that well, um, was, uh, if you see this split rail fence that's following my cursor right here, that was one of the things that the planning board had requested to be placed. In addition to that, there'll be signage on there similar to, um, I know, I think it's Mill River Estates, I think was one of them where, and I know Janet knows where there's a language to be put on the sign placard say conservation land and to make people aware of what's behind that split rail fence. So that was the conditions that were placed on the permit from the planning board. The applicant went before the planning board last evening to modify one of the conditions, which was the conservation restriction had to be in place prior to building permit. Um, one of the challenges for the applicant was that, you know, trying to get somebody to maybe enter into a purchase sales to build a house, not knowing the time frame for delivery with a conservation restriction is concerned about that being an issue. So last evening, the planning board modified the permit to allow this conservation restriction to be in place prior to an occupancy permit. And then the, the additional condition that was added that wasn't on the first approval of the planning board is that this fence is split rail fence and signage will need to be put in prior to occupancy permit being issued for that home. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think we've advanced through the review process, so I don't anticipate um, you know this necessarily overly impacting moving forward on this lot um, because of the time frame with the planning board. But I wanted to just again present that to the commission for the first time. And then I want to just scroll up. Janet was kind enough to uh, include some uh, conservation values to include um, within the conservation restrictions. So the open space protection for those, I'll scroll up in a second. This is back, the back property is part of the uh, Charles River Natural Valley storage area. Again, protection of priority habitat, rare species, and the soils on the site, which are far, prime farmland. I'm gonna scroll up just so you can see the bigger view of this uh, in the surrounding area. Build a house here. Pretty good thing. They can build a house here. 
and then they want to give the town all the rest of this land so that they nobody builds anything back here. So if you can see, uh, just a little, there we go. Okay. So now here, the what I've highlighted in red is the, the property boundaries. So this plan is already on record. So that is a lot that uh, is on record with uh, the town of Norfolk. And it's had, it has also been picked up by MassGIS. But if you can see where the Charles River Natural Valley storage area is here, this, this area along in here that's identified. And then the Mill River is to the backside of it. Um, to give you a, an idea of where it is locationally. So that's, uh, so that's really kind of the general overview. Hopefully the commission agrees that uh, the conservation restriction is a worthy endeavor. Um, and we'll, uh, once the final language come back, hopefully agree to uh, bless it. And then uh, that be the case, they could, you know, you would sign off on it. Again, the select board would sign off on it and then it would get recorded at the Norfolk Registry Deeds, and then we would get copies of the recording back to us as well. I'll just pause for questions here. Rich, yeah, Rich it's Fred LaBerge. Uh, yep. the, the area that's being proposed to be set aside, uh, mm -hmm. from the aerial uh, image, it looked like it was uh, essentially a woodlot. Is that what it is? Or is it more yeah. swampy like the area? Uh, in in the uh, the Charles River Valley, you know, I I can't say that I have walked back there, so I don't know for sure. To be honest with you, um, that's the pictures that uh, Walter had done. It's, it's a thick old forest growth. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think it's still upland area at, at this point on his lot until you get off the property. Yeah, do I have the pictures? I think I do, right? Did I include that? Let me see. Uh, okay, now we're going slow. All the re resources that we deal with are off the back of a lot. It slopes down, then you've got the wetlands, you've got flood zone for the back of the river. So Okay, so it slopes back there, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was getting at. So, okay. yeah, so it does slope towards the river. Um, all right, now the computer's not being nice to me here to try to. Do the commissioners have any questions, comments? I just got one for Rich. Rich, I'm looking at the plan here. Is that being, um, that property being set, um, subdivided into three lots? So it, it already has been subdivided into three lots. So this, uh, if you look on the lower right hand corner, mm -hmm. this actually was done in 2018. So he had, um, so lot one, two, and three were on the same plan with the estate lot. Those were all approved in, in 2018. And now he's essentially finishing up, so to speak, the last lot of those three. Okay, so just so I can grip, get a grip on this, Going back to the picture that you had your red line on, where are these lots fitting in there? Because it's it's like it's got a 50-foot buffer or driveway first, and then they separate out. Yeah, so let me see. I can hold on a second. I'll go back. Yeah, you know what? I didn't actually uh, – I zoomed in a little too tight. So this is, this is that – this is lot two right here where I have my cursor. Okay, okay. And then to the top of the page is – the uh, lot one. Okay, I see it now. I'm just looking at the green, how it's all shaped with the green. I thought it was fitting in there. Yeah. Okay. I don't think, you know what? It might be, if we can, I'll scroll down. Let me see. A little slow response time here. I don't know what the heck. I was going to go down to the next. Uh... All right. It's not doing what I want. Let's see. Well, uh, it's probably a little bit better. Hold on a second, right here. So this is this is this lot here where I have my cursor. Okay. Yep. So this is so 65, 67, 
which actually was the original lot. Yep. From Ms. Ms. Clary's home. And then 71. So those okay. that's really the all right. I wasn't seeing 71 and 67 in with the red, so I'm good. All right. And there are already houses on 71 and 67, right, yes. Rich? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If I may, David, Rich, are you hoping to get this um, back from EOEA for our next meeting? Yes. Yes. Good. So why don't we put that one down for 7.30 at the next meeting, Amy? Okay. Which takes us now to uh, Abbeville. Yes. So let's see. I'm going to, I want to scroll down just to kind of, I'm going to use this clock from actually the start and then I'll scroll back up. So as you, um, depends how much you followed along, but Abbeville was approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals for this area, which is highlighted in red, which ended up being just the LaRusso property. Originally it included the Buckley Man property to the east where I have my cursor. Um, through the comprehensive permit process and that review process. And then there's, there's more uh, investigation got into the issue with the uh, Buckley Man site as far as what, you know, the contamination on the site. So long story short, Mr. DePlasso scaled back the development for Abbeville to what you see before you and was the two, par two properties uh, owned by Mr. LaRusso. The, um, this little parcel here, which I have, and I'll have another exhibit to show you, but um, that's a town owned parcel. And this, this is uh, the area. So Abbeville was approved for 64 homes. And I'm trying to think the combination. Um, I don't, it escapes me, but they're single family homes and duplexes um, over in this area. But I'll, I'll, let me show you the, let me show you actually one. Yeah. So I might bounce around. I'm gonna bounce around a little bit for it, unfortunately, but so let me see, what do we have there? 30, 22. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Oh, never mind. I'm going to go right here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. This gives you an idea with the, you know, there might be some slight tweaks to this because the, the, the planning board, uh, planning board, sorry, zoning board of appeals appro approved the preliminary design um, that you see on the screen. And they're just working on the final engineering. But essentially, this is the more or less the, the lot, the development configuration. Um, and what what was a part of the, and, and just for background, this development didn't require any filings with the Conservation Commission. So well, the original one might have had jurisdictional issues, um, but because it the way this was scaled back and the way it was developed on the site, as far as the uh, development goes, it's not requiring a notice of intents under the uh, Wetlands Protection Act. And of course, you know, the, wetlands, the, the local bylaw gets waived under the, the uh, comprehensive permit. But anyway, so that's, so you won't be seeing it from a permitting standpoint, but one of the, one of the aspects of the approval, and I'm gonna scroll up, bear with me a second. I'll, uh, you know what, let me, I'll talk to this point, I guess, I suppose, might be easier. Um, is the option of having the open space, which is the rear portion of this development, be given to the town of Norfolk as open space. So that's one option. Um, this, the two other options is it will be retained by the development through a housing associate, uh, the you know, homeowners association with a restriction over it. But um, I'm gonna try to pitch towards the first option, hopefully in the commission would agree 
is to have the open space come to the town of Norfolk. And a, a few different reasons why I would suggest that um, has merit from the town perspective. Number one, the green parcel here that you see that fronts on Lawrence Street is a town owned parcel. It's not under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, but it is open space for the town of Norfolk. It certainly could shift to the conservation, but nevertheless, it's an open lot and it's a wooded lot, not developed. This piece of town owned land abuts what is Abbeville um, development, which if the town chooses to accept the open space, there would be an easement granted for access through Abbeville development into the adjacent open space in the town of Franklin, which I think, uh, let me see, I have, let me see. All right, hold on, sorry about this. This is probably better, there you go. So if you can see, this is Acorn Woods. Coincidentally, this was developed by Mr. De Placido years ago in the town of Franklin. But um, so this, this piece here is the town, as I mentioned, town property. There would be an easement granted over this portion of Abbeville development, which would then reach into Acorn Woods II conservation area, which would then get us back to this part of the property, which would be then become the town of Norfolk, which then <laughs> it's off the screen, but this, this little triangle piece coming down in here, uh, actually I'll scroll up, sorry to bounce around, but that's this triangle right here, which is already town open space. This parcel here is owner unknown, which uh, you know had some preliminary discussions with the treasurer's office. It probably be worthwhile for the town to find out the owner the ownership issue maybe pursue that at a future date to try to acquire it. So having said that, you would then kind of assemble a much large area of natural woodland that has trails throughout um, the area. And then uh, I haven't been all the way back here, but of course the train's running here if you see across here, but then there is open space on the other side of the tracks that then goes over to Main Street. But needless to say, I think there's um, there are trails through there already. Um, I think it would be definitely a benefit to not only the new residents, but the residents of Norfolk as a whole. Um, one of the things that wasn't contemplated in the comprehensive permit, um, but I'd like to you know make the pitch for us. Hopefully, maybe we can work with Mr. DePlacido, the town, the uh, CPC, maybe to have a little off street gravel parking area for uh, residents. And they don't have to be residents of Norfolk necessarily. Mm -hmm. Anybody to be able to park there and then walk through the woods, which would technically be better than I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down one more time. Um, so this roadway here that my cursor is running along will become a uh, municipal road that will be under the, the care and uh, care and maintenance of the town of Norfolk. So there is a public road in there, but this wasn't designed necessarily with public parking within the development. But since we have a, I think probably a, a nice place for which we could do it down here, that would be something hopefully that we could uh, pursue. So this is, um, I had said to the ZBA that I would approach the, the commission to introduce the topic um, have you give it some thought um, right now the the appeal period expired today and uh, as far as I can tell I'm happy to report that no appeals were taken from anybody um, which is a good thing because now we are going to be in safe harbor for 40b for 22 months so I think that's Hats off to all the people that have participated in that to get to this point. That's a, it's an important achievement for the town of Norfolk. Um, the final design plans will be worked on and it'll come back to the, uh, the, the uh, ZBA for final sign off. But I want to introduce it now because if there's strong interest, we can kind of, I'd like to be able to report back to the ZBA 
the thoughts of the commission. So I'll segue there and open up for questions, comments, et cetera. Tom, do you have any uh, comments you want to add? I think Rich uh, did a very nice presentation here. And um, actually 25 years ago, uh, Rich mentioned that I did develop by uh, Ecorn Woods in Franklin and we set aside some open space there. So it's actually uh, would be really nice um, to see uh, this come to fruition with um, a larger piece of uh, open space that does have some existing trails to it that could be linked up to the property that um, on both ends that the town owns. Um, one on Lawrence Street and one that's landlocked um, back towards the uh, towards the the, the uh, railroad line and things, and um, I'd be uh, I, I would be actually uh, happy and, and more than willing to work with the town to uh, deed that property over to them and um, deed some type of access, whether it's an easement or a piece of land that would connect um, the town's property on Lawrence Street through the Acorn Woods Conservation Area to this property that the town owns. So to make a nice um, green uh, green belt, uh, green necklace, however you want to phrase it. Yeah. So uh, I think it's something that could work out very nicely for the, for the town and the residents in that area. Yeah, it's a nice plan, mm -hmm. proposed plan. Yeah. Uh, is there any questions, comments from the commissioners? Yeah, it's Fred, just one question, the uh, Acorn Woods conservation area that's in Franklin, is that actively used now? Yeah, it is. There's actually, um, I think if you uh, if you wanted to, Fred or, and all the other commissioners, if you pop on the uh, Town of Franklin website, they have a, I don't have the link, I think a link on top of my head, but they do have what they have on that property as far as <clears throat> Passive recreation, that is, but yeah. What, so I, I, I do know it is being utilized for that purpose. Okay. I, I have a quick question, and I'm, I'm I'm all for what Tom's doing here, what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But the red polygon area that's owner unknown, if the town is not able to acquire that, is that not going to put like a restraint on what we're trying to accomplish here to access? that back piece of property? Oops, hold on. So we actually, um, so if you want to just look at this exhibit, so this, it, where I have my cursor would be the rear portion of Abbeville, mm -hmm. which would directly abut the town piece here. So we would be able to- Through, we don't, that, through that corner that Tom- yeah, yeah, through this corner here. We don't necessarily need that to get okay. access to it, but- Okay. It certainly would be, uh, I think, ideal to try to acquire it down the road. Well, that clarifies me, Rich, if Tom's willing to give us an easement through that piece of property to get to the other one, then that's, that solves that, my question. I'm okay. good. It looks like there's a couple of streams that run through there. Yeah. Are those seasonal? Um, one, one is seasonal and one is perennial. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Anybody in the audience? Okay, so uh, this is for future discussion, correct? Um, well, unless you're so enthusiastic, you wanted to say yes tonight. <laughs> I just, <laughs> David. Yes, sir. I just have one concern. Um, if we're going to take over, um, Ownership or or what how, whatever the phrase is for this particular property, um, I know we've had issues on the man site with contamination. Has Janet walked through any of these areas to make sure there's amphibious life in the pools, unlike what we found at, on the man sites? I just it's a great plan and it does marry up a lot of conservation land. I just want to make sure we're not inheriting something that we're going to have to clean up years from now. That that's that's my only concern. When I was reading over um, Abbeville, Rich, do you have any comments regarding that? 
Yeah, so the, um, I don't know if it shows up that well, but um, I don't, I don't think this actually butts, does it butt the middle river? Yeah, middle river. Well, at least from the invest, thus far from the investigation through the uh, LSP's evaluation, the, there wasn't any activity back in this area on the property. Um, you know, as far as milling or uh, textile, you know, the mills that were up, up here um, in this area on the Buckley Man property. The only other, uh, which we don't have an absolute answer on is, um, I suppose is downgrading property owners from if there's contamination from Buckley Man. However, we already own property that abuts the Mill River. So I guess uh, we could, if you wanted to, let me see. Well, let's, let me say this, I'm gonna scroll up. I mean, uh, we just, and I'll, I'll answer your question this way. So the uh, um, Environmental Protection Agency had just done some sampling out here on September 22nd. And there, I don't have the results back from them yet, but I can, I can see what comes of that. But I will say, this decision for Abbeville doesn't have doesn't have to happen tomorrow necessarily. So if you see, this needs to be squared away by the um, 60th occupancy permit. So if you wanted to pause for tonight and I can come back and give you a little bit more developed thought on it, I could certainly do that on that. Yeah, because most of the soil type over there was fairly sandy or yeah. sandy to at least two or three feet, which was why they were using that, the pit process they were for like the carbonizer plant and stuff like that back yeah. in the day. So you just wanted to make sure that, you know, the pit didn't get full and they decided to drive something in the back and dump for a little bit, you know, over the course of it was almost a hundred years that they had the clothing plant there. So before they determined that they would use just a couple of set um pits that they had lined hmm. that that's my only concern is yeah. you know we don't you know want somebody setting up a picnic table or hiking through land that um we might have maybe looked a little closer at to make sure it's cleaned up before we take possession or sure or yep. what do we need to do yep. tom have you have any information on how clean that whole property is the LaRusso? I can tell you that the uh, the LaRussos have controlled this property. Um, uh, the Mann family or the Buckley and Mann uh, company has never owned this property um, where anything would have been um, cited there from their from their facilities and, and their processing. Also, the uh, the processing and, and, and waste area is um, quite a distance away um, from where we're, we're developing and where this is. And also, uh, Janet could probably speak of this, but there is a certified rental pool that um, did have wildlife that was identified on this pro on this parcel too. So um, there is, you know, amphibian life and things that are uh, that are going here. And through our um, testing and, and research and everything on this site, um, you know, we haven't um, come across anything. And also, um, this was an old gravel pit down in this area. Um, I think, which is probably the genesis of the vernal pool. They dug down a little bit too low um, and, and created that area, which uh, actually you can see on this plan here. So um, yeah, I, I, from anything that we've seen, um, you know, there, there's nothing on this property. Um, if there was, we, we probably wouldn't, you know, we would not be developing it. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I think Rich, you know, we'll, it's good information and gives us a heads up on it. And as this project continues, then we can um, look at it and uh, go to an acceptance later on. Yeah. The full discussion. Okay, I'll uh, 
I'll do a little more homework on that question and and then come back to report to the commission. And where does this stand with the ZBA? So like I said, the appeal period uh, was uh, went through today. There was no appeals taken. So there is some engineering work, uh, work that needs to be done to get it to um, constructible plans to be endorsed by the, uh, by, excuse me, uh, the ZBA. I don't know, Mr. DePlasso might have a better idea when that'll be back before the ZBA. I know, I know it's supposed to be, I think we're supposed to see some plans by within 60 days or something like that, Tom, was the? Um, I think that uh, we had, we had to um, get a review from, a peer review from 60 days from when we submitted it back to the ZBA, I think it was, uh, was the time frame. So now that there's there's no um, appeal on it, um, we will be working forward to finalize the plans, submit them to the board, and then the board would, um, and the peer review consultant would review it uh, final time before they endorse it. Okay. Is there any comments from uh, the audience? Yes. I want to say something. Yes. Is it Mr. Polly? Mark Polly? It says. Hey, okay. how's it going? Thanks a lot. Yeah, my name is Mark Pauly. I live over at uh, 14 Lawrence Street. Um, and I guess I just had a, I had a question a little bit about like the usage of the open space. So I think if you looked at, you know, any of the satellite images, um, you'll see there's kind of a lot of like uh, ATV and dirt bike activity back there. Um, certainly where the development will be, but also on some of the trails in the open space. Um, and just, you know, being in a butter, I see them go across the open space um, and into um, kind of the Buckley and Mann property through some of the connecting trails that kind of, you know, go along that property line. Um, and obviously that's that's kind of a little bit of a concern with me just because of the you know, contamination over there and, and so on. Um, and I guess I was just trying to understand, like, is that a permitted use of, of open space if the town were to take this over? Um, I imagine that the um, residents of Abbeville, once it's built out, might not also want, you know, dirt bikes kind of going through the trails in the open space. No, you're correct, uh, Mark. Uh, there's no motorized vehicles in on uh, town land, conservation land. No hunting either. Great, yeah. Fishing that's, without permits. That's good to know. Um, yeah, that's certainly kind of been a battle. So we, yeah, we'd have to shut it down. Yeah, um, is and yeah. So I mean, that's you know, it's great, and it'll be get, great to see how this gets built out, and and if we do take it over, um, kind of how that you know reacts a little bit. I just think, you know, the the man done a little bit to kind of um, um, kind of put put down blocks to prevent people entering from the 17 Lawrence Street property right right off by Bush Pond. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we still see a lot of people riding in from the neighborhoods in Franklin. Um, and that's, you know, kind of the abutting, you know, neighborhoods over there on Meadow Lark and, and Stewart Street and so on. Um, and I think that's where the majority of folks are coming from. Um, you know, as an abutter, someone who works home at home every day, I, I kind of look over the, the main entrance to 17 Lawrence Street. And, you know, I, I haven't seen a lot of people dropping off dirt bikes there anymore. Um, so that's, that's taking a step in the right direction. But, um, you know, again, just... Uh, you know, it's good to hear that that would be the case if that property were taken over. And if there would be a way to have like signage or or something like that put in place, that, that might be helpful as well. Yeah, we would do signage. Um, yeah, once we accept the town accepts the property, um, we can start putting up some signs and maybe some barriers or whatever to uh, prevent uh, motorized vehicles from entering that open space land. Fantastic. That's uh, great to hear. Thank you for your input. Yep. Is there anybody else would like to say anything regarding uh, the Abbeville? I don't see anybody. Okay. All right. Well, again, look forward to this getting a little bit closer to us and um, we'll take action when necessary. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Um, let's see, what else do we have to uh, discuss tonight? Um, is there any other business 
Oh, two, two sets of minutes. You yeah, just a minute, other than the minutes. So I didn't know if you wanted to talk about the um, the MBTA communications regarding the vegetation. Uh, no, they'll be in front of us next month, but I would encourage the uh, commissioners to uh, read what has been given to us um, by the MBTA and also the uh, Wetland Association and stuff so that uh, when we talk to the MBTA, we can question them and uh, see if we can guide them appropriately. And they've been good in taking our suggestions and comments uh, on other implementations. David, um, one, David, one thing. Yes, Janet. I don't know because on the um, sorry agenda, unanticipated new business as required because I see Dewey's been here all night, very patient. He was the gentleman that had cut up the trees down um, on my favorite. Lynn the farm? Yes. And I had given you oh, his okay. information for you to um, get in touch with him. And and here he is for the Zoom meeting. So I know, per se, it's not specifically listed, but um, he's anxious. And while people are anxious to help us, we always want to get them on board for he's He's not a motorized bike. He's a mountain bike person yeah. um, for doing the trails and everything and wants to just have communication with them helping to help with taking care of the trails, you know? So I just want okay. to, he's been very patient. I, and that's David in the upper right-hand corner. Thank you. Hi, Dewey. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get it on everybody's radar that uh, Lind Farm is becoming a more popular mountain biking destination, uh, which is not motorized. It's bicycles with uh, wider tires, um, really great trails for that. And we've been volunteering, helping with the trail maintenance and uh, getting rid of some of the deadfalls. And it'd be great to get it on your radar for the future if there's ever any resources that can be allocated to help with that trail maintenance or the cleanup. Like after storms, we've been out there, you know, raking and removing trees. Um, you may not know, but uh, mountain biking does have a very positive economic impact on an area that's their higher household income folks um, in the sport. And they do travel, you know, anywhere from 50 to 60 miles locally to, to ride and we think it's great for Lind Farm and it's becoming more and more popular. So we wanted to get that on your radar. We'd love to hear your thoughts about, about Lind Farm becoming a destination for mountain biking. Okay, do we have your contact information, do we? Uh, I believe uh, Janet still has it. And um, Amy emailed me this morning and I can email her uh, my contact information. Okay, back. because it is Lind Farm, I think is the next uh, trail that we would like to look at. We've just finished basically Campbell Forest. And uh, in fact, we just received new signs for both Campbell Forest and Lynn Farms that we'll be putting out on the street to point people into those directions. Oh, great. And so uh, I'd be glad to uh, talk with you later on to um, offline to discuss what we need to do. Um, I think parking is one of the issues uh, and so we don't have to always go through the um, lazy looper land. Yep. Get okay. closer to the trail by off of Marshall Street, uh, where the town does own some land uh, that we could uh, maybe get develop into a parking lot and then an entrance into the Lynn Farm and oh uh, wow start putting um, some We've arrows and things in there so people don't get lost. But uh, yeah, we do want to bring that one up to scale. And the other thing, by doing this, both for Campbell Forest and Lind Farms, we then can put it into a trail book that is published by a woman uh, for all the local trails so that people know what is available in each town, what kind of a surface it is, what it can be used for. And right. um, so again, it will attract people that are into trails and uh, but uh, yeah, we would encourage, uh, you know, community input like you're doing uh, okay. to help us out on that. So Great. I'll definitely work uh, with you and then we'll get to see what other, what needs to be done and then the commissioner will talk about it and then uh, we'll see what we can uh, put forth. 
great. That's that's great to hear. We really appreciate it. And I think, did you have something? Yeah. Else? Hey, David. My, uh, hey, everybody. My name is Kean. Uh, I've been working with Dewey out there. The two of us have kind of ganged up together, both mountain bikers. Um, we actually have a solution for parking. Okay. Farm. Um, so we can pass that by you. Okay. Um, you know, when, when, you, when we talk to you offline. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah, the time. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for waiting. Thanks. What's that? Oh, no, I was just thanking him for being patient and waiting. Okay. Thank you, Dewey. Good night. Um, is there anything else other than the minutes? Uh, Sandy or um, Mark, Donna, any comments? Okay, then. Uh, mm -hmm. Has everybody read the minutes for August 12th and September 9th? Yes. Okay. Um, there were corrections to it because it referenced the uh, zoning board and not the conservation commission. And Amy has changed that. Correct. Yes. So um, we can make a motion to uh, accept the minutes of August 12th and September 9th as revised. Excuse me, David, there was one more change on September 9th. Um, yep. I had originally had a um, DEP number for 180 Union Street, and that actually should have been blank. I had somebody else's DEP number. In there. Oh, okay. So I fixed that. Okay. So again, we'll uh, accept, take a motion to uh, approve the minutes as amended. Hi, it's Fred. I'll move that we accept the minutes for the August and September meetings as amended. Second. Allie for a second. Uh, Jack, do you have any comments? Oh, where's Jack Wilson? <laughs> He's gone. No, there he is. Okay. All in favor of accepting the minutes as revised, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. Those minutes are accepted. Our next meeting is November 4th, and uh, we already have a four or five items to go on there, so it'll be busy again. But uh, I think we're persevering and getting through all these um, issues and notice of intents and uh, all to the positive for the town and the developers and homeowners. So I'll accept a mo other than that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn this meeting. Ali Fair, I moved to close. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So oh, I'll, can I ask one point of uh oh, oh, oh. of Amy? Just uh, what what do we need to sign? Uh for Covenant Avenue and eleven Pentacook, anything else? Um, yeah, there's a certificate of compliance and a certificate of release. Um, I just put my um, agenda aside. Um, I'm going to have to let me email everybody tomorrow. Let me get everything all straight and okay, uh, great. email everybody in the morning. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Amy, okay. I'm, work, I'm working tomorrow. So anytime I can swing in and see you, I can sign. No, no. problem. Perfect. No, no David says no. no. Okay, forget it then. I won't sign. Flush those, <laughs> flush those hydrants. <laughs> We're all done with that. Oh. <laughs> okay, then. All in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. All right. We'll see you on November 4th or on the streets before then. Good night. Bye. Thank you, for this Thank you night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Say good night. Good night. Good night, Jack. Good night, Good night Jack. Good night. <laughs>